Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Teddy. Can't stop snapping. Incredible episode for you guys coming off right in the wake of one of the most amazing OTA balance patches that we have ever had. We also have a release of Nomura that we're going to talk about and then looking forward to Sasquatch, which I know is a very hotly anticipated card to cap out this season. Brad, can we go OTA first? Let's yeah. do a game. We're each going to shout out at the exact same time the best change because I'm sure we're thinking the same thing. So okay. three, two, one. Grandmaster. They buffed Werewolf. No, it's Grandmaster. Oh, no. Grandmaster? Yep. As the best change? Yep. Are you kidding me? Like, nope. I, okay, I love the change, but I did not expect you to go. Grandmaster. Uh, so let me play Devil's Advocate. No, it, for it is very buddy. interesting. Like I will be playing Grandmaster in my Werewolf deck, but yep. I like the Werewolf as like the headline change a little bit more. Okay. See, that's the trap you've fallen into, just like everyone. Oh else. no, I have fallen into the trap. Everyone's I've fallen fallen into that trap of like up. Werewolf is back, baby. I hate when they put Werewolf by Night as an abbreviation, so it's W W B N. Yeah. Like. I'm just like, just say werewolf. Just type out yeah. werewolf or just type uh -huh. out wolf. Like, right. I know what you're talking about. Just please don't put WWBN. That drives me insane. Anyway. It does for me too a little bit. Um, Yes, this is a card that's back and it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to see it a decent amount. Uh, that's the thing. It's like, it's such a fun card. And right. it got nerfed into the ground going to the forecast. Yes. And now you have the ability to even play Ravona with it, which is cool. You can go Ravona on two and then Werewolf plus a one drop on reveal on three. Yep. Yep. Already get things going. I like that. What I don't like is Werewolf's best home, probably still. It, Dark Hawk. It, it, it certainly was. Oh, not, no, 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 no. Loki was the best home for Werewolf. Uh, by yeah, true, far. true. Yeah, the OG Loki was pretty hot. Because you just had all the cheap on our veals yeah. to, uh, to like get it going. That deck has um, changed a lot. True, but it still runs all the cheap on our veals. So I think it can just kind of, you know, flex back into playing werewolf again um, pretty easily. I would imagine yeah. uh, like back to the version that like Loki was its top end. The most expensive thing in the entire list was Loki. Yeah, that's a version. So the, Loki has shifted to do like Elsa, Kitty, Angela, Mm -hmm. And that, I think the OG Loki werewolf broke up some of that, at least. Right. It basically got rid of the... Um, you maybe can still do Angel. Angel's a little weird, though. Um, the kitty is probably cuttable. If you yeah. cut the kitty, though, you're probably cutting Angela. However, um, Elsa still might be fine. Elsa could be list. fine in her current state, yeah, for sure. Because that I list wonder... fills the board very easily. Right. And I, but I do wonder if there's any true confliction between Werewolf and her be, both being at three and then Agents at three as well. So you have three, three costs yeah. right off rip. Um, but, you know, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. So my main thing with Werewolf is like it's bringing back Loki. I yep. fear, uh, which people are going to, I'm just I, oh, not even fear. because I mean, I'm worried about seeing Loki. I'm okay. worried about seeing the complaints about seeing Loki. No, I'm not. I feel like Loki hit kind of an evergreen position and like, People know what Loki does. And Mobius is in a fine spot right now. I still see people complain about him every day. All right. Every day on Twitter. I just, I don't know. I, I've learned to just have him all around at the, t like pretty much at mm -hmm. all times in the meta. I even play him a fair bit. If I'm just kind of messing around, I don't have a deck that is inspiring me. Loki is like my personal fallback. So definitely going to be trying Loki werewolf, bounce werewolf, um, hawk werewolf, all of these kind of combinations. And, Grandmaster is going to be super fun there as well. Yeah. I want to take us on a little bit of a tangent. Sure. It's not immediately apparent, but have you seen the Cerebro buffs? The Luke Cage change and the Captain America change for Cerebro 3 and 2 respectively are pretty insane. Like, right. Cerebro 3 just gets Luke Cage back, which is so important for that deck. Um, they have to run this. That is so very straightforward. Cerebro 3 is weird with Luke Cage because it doesn't happen often. However, yeah. there will be games oh, where yeah, yeah. 
that wonderful monster island rears its and head you and you get it. it and you want to valk it but you can't play luke cage now because it gets stuck at 10 i still think it's going to help your deck overall to have do, luke cage in the toolbox especially as a three cost like you should know the locations before you play him okay but imagine it's westview right and you go oh like yeah no, that three, would feel... your, your only location <laughs> available on on uh like only yeah. playable card on turn three yeah. is luke cage like i guess i'll just tempo it out i guess westview. i'll just lose turns up monster yeah. island uh right yeah feels great um yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it's fine and like i i okay can i can i just say that the captain america in c2 feels a little bit like cope to me yeah c2 is a little bit cope just because it has like no well you have control cards i guess you have shadow king and rogue uh-huh and you yeah, have but, Storm, and then you, you have all the C2 Cap tricks. Cap America is specifically just, just like, do I do the thing with Cap America, Cerebro, yes. Mystique to yes. give them their own buff, which is the same reason you ran Nico for the most part in C2 Oh, to get the well. plus two, yes, or Forge. Or, if but you Nico, to. Nico is better because you can at least get copies of the Cerebro as well. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Nico like, has more versatility. Yeah. Or overall. you can blow up an Iceman or a Nightcrawler to draw two. Like that, that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, Cat yeah, America yeah. is like starts and stops at this <laughs> interaction. Yes. Yes. So, uh, okay. Actually, Iron look, Man. There's, there's Iron one Man. more Iron Man too. Yeah, sure. And there's one other interaction. Uh, if they White Widow you and you fill oh, the lane and you put. You get it up. <laughs> You get it to two. I mean, that's a common yeah. meta thing at the moment. You get it so to two. It's true. So. Like, I think C3 or C2 would run it. I think it doesn't make C2 good, but I think no. C2 will run it. Sure. C2 is a weird one because C2 is like maybe the most toolboxy of all of the Cerebro decks. Right. It's like, like there's just so many two power cards that are like very disruptive or like just yeah, good Goose, for metas. Rogue, Shadow Storm. King, Sw Storm, Scorpion, Storm, yeah, Storm, I, I Scorpion, Scorpion too, yeah, Storm, Scorpion, sure. Iceman, etc. Like the list of cards is really fun to use, and they're the thing is like they're all a little off meta, so they like tickle yep. a part of your brain you don't get to use very often. Um, put it all in the same package, and then C three is the actual competitive one, and I think the Luke Cage actually does help that deck a fair bit. Yeah, so like I, I, I just. I'd rather just look at Captain America an ongoing list. He he replaces oh, yes. Punisher. Yes. In the ongoing affliction deck, right? Yeah, I saw some people be like, "Well, you just run both," and I'm like, ah, "Do do uh, you? Don't we? We want to do scale you? into other things yeah. as soon as we can, also, or we want to use our two drops that are cheaper the, to get more things on the board." Yep. Yeah. The few people I've seen be like, "Well, Captain America, like this sucks because it's only ongoing, and it's like, what happens if they enchantress like that whole lane where you stacked all these ongoings?" I'm like, "That's what happened Cosmo. in the deck already." Yeah. If like you, your deck has an insane vulnerability <laughs> to Enchantress. <laughs> Who would have yeah. thought, Teddy? Not what were you me. doing before, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, I don't. I just don't get it. But yeah, Captain the... America is like Captain America is probably my favorite buff, purely because finally. Um, yes, yeah, exactly. Finally, it was a card that really deserved it, and this ongoing deck is not even off meta. Like I feel like it's a meta deck. It it's, is. No, it it's absolutely proving is. It, it's, to it's have some real staying top, power. Been one of the top decks for a while. Yes. Now, and with the um, claw change, you even have like a, a, a mix up you can throw in. Do you Spectrum or do you Onslaught? And that's also really good mm -hmm. for the deck. And now with Captain America, Onslaughting Captain America with another stack, they're like, that's tremendous hey, for you, right? So, yeah. Just um, do like turn one. Ant Man, turn two, whatever, turn yeah. three, Captain America. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just like even just being able to go tall on a lane with all Onslaught, like we've I've talked about before with uh, that kind of stuff, uh, is pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like this is just going to be really fun to play with. And then also with, I mean, it was partially meta because of Leech at four. Leech at five, I think he's going to settle way off meta. Okay. But if you, he stays you, around, um, then the ongoing is still going to be solid. You say that. I am hoping I that. I streamed Listen, don't... today. Oh, I no. streamed today and ran into Leech in a, nearly half of my games. Oh my gosh. Now, do you want to know, know the, do you know the, do you know the play? No, no, no. These were intentional, I feel. No, but I feel like that's a lower percentage than what you would see sure. before. Well, but yeah, sure. they're still um, they're but building like, around Leech now. 
there was a Sandman ramp list that just yeah. went Electro on three, Leech on four, and then Sandman. Um, Sandman leader. Oh gosh! And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's. I was like, oh no, it's that just like me. what Sandman wanted. A card that exactly. actually like has decent tempo now with his leech. Five five. Leech is or a, at leech. that point it's a four five, right? It, it's a turn right. four five power drop with heavy control. Right. Rolls into another heavy control card, rolls into copying your card at a higher tempo now because leader got a buff as well. Exactly. Do we want to cap out the conversation on the Spectrum ongoing deck at all? Because Spectrum and Luke Cage got nerfed, but Captain America got buffed. I feel like the deck uh, is still gonna be fine. Yeah, these these two changes don't do anything. I, okay. Frankly, Spectrum at six six is is fine. Uh, that's the only one I'm like. I guess they could revert later if they feel the need to. Luke Cage is one I was like, this should have been a three three to start, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm pretty 3, happy. Four with, was a little bit pushed. Pretty happy with the positioning of all of these. Yeah, um, but yeah, let's let's look at the green guys uh, next, and we'll get to. Yep. Uh, the uh, the more interesting oh. ones, I suppose, and I, I all three I say, green guys, all three green guys. I count yeah. Baron Mordo in there. So <laughs> let's start with uh, the elephant in the room or the green guy in the room. It's it's Leech going from a four two yep. to a five five. Um, they said unexpectedly. Uh, the four costs had a uh, you know other consequences. Shocker. Um, they wanted Leech to attack the likes of Annihilus in particular. Um, yeah. And they were like, huh? It did not do, do it. that <laughs> at all. Frankly, uh, and Niles' win that. rate stayed pretty much the same, uh, yeah, I, but then uh, yeah. Leech's win rate just went really high. And we're like, this really is high. not good. No. And I was sitting there going, like, Blink, it's her fault. It, uh, it is, however, enormously Blink's fault. I have been blinked twice today where they, they you know, ramp Leech, blink on uh, five again still, and now they just get a guaranteed six drop, or yeah. even worse. I had someone go magic, uh, in magic on four, yep. blink on five, okay. and then they pulled the leech out. Oh, they pulled the leech out of that. Do you know? Do you know what I played on five? And I had priority. What did you play on five? Jane Foster. Oh. with three hammers, because I had four in one lane, and uh, and then I had uh, beta on Kamratage. So, out. I was just like, ooh. I'm just going to retreat. <laughs> zero, zero, <laughs> zero. So no bad. ability. Yeah. yeah. So it's... um, Leech is, Leech is worse, but I still worry that the 5-5 five five is enough to make him actually, like, playable. playable. Yeah, just as they, like, the tempo drop. Kind of like Sandman's change, right? Where he went from, like, a niche control card to, yeah, I could if I want to just control my opponent, make them hate yeah. their life, and pow. Um, and then yeah I feel like for this one we have to look back like he used to be a 5-3 right and he was not played mm -hmm. that much but now he's a 5-5 five, five. it feels a lot better for the decks that are just looking better, for yeah. uh, like you know if you're pick in a, in a 5 cost price point it's like oh do I run Legion or do I run Leech the, it's tipping a lot more Leech right um, if like you I'm... have a deck that has that opening of like a high end utility card Maybe it's a bad comparison, but that's kind of how I think of my decks. Like some decks can no, fit an extra I, I five agree. cost, some can't. Some decks want have to have that spot be filled by a power generator, and some can use utility. And my utility options, my top picks are Leech and Legion. Yeah, that's why we have generic six drops, right? You have yeah. cards like Spectrum that are very synergistic six drops, but then you have cards like Red Hulk or Doctor Doom that people are just right. like, I will slot that in. Um, as your your catch all or then, like, Eliath, right? Eliath so you as your utility. Yeah. Doctor Doom is power. Eliath is utility. That's kind of yep. how I view deck building. Right. Yeah, and I I think Leech is going to still see some decent play. Um, uh oh. And uh, right next to him is Leader. I'm going to be honest with you. This one was a little surprising. I was like, thought Leader was just fine. Um, I don't yeah. hate the buff by any means. I'm not like scared of it, but I thought Leader, his... especially with um. Sandman, uh, with his change, we, is really Is it good. at your fingertips to look at what his win rate was? Was it, like, real bad? Like, uh, So I, do, I don't currently have premium for uh, Untapped. Okay. So okay. It, it, me doing that would not help anything. I guess I could go to... I didn't go to snap.fan. Snap snap you... fan. No, no, you, you vamp, I'll find it. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so with Leader, like, my thing was, like... And they even mentioned this. Uh, leader they thought would be a bigger counter to like Red Hulk 
and stuff. And it just didn't really come to fruition. So they're like, well, let's try to give people a little nudge in this direction of like being able to counter some of these big, dumb, idiot six drops. 54% Um, win percent when drawn. Okay. That's not bad. No, that's fine. And so that's old leader, right, guys? Um, Right, 6-2. Now he's... He actually has... Maybe the trend they're seeing is that his decks have a higher win percent than when he's drawn, and his decks have a higher win percent than when he's played. So actually, Hmm. he is a liability. He's either dead in hand or on board. He actually doesn't do what people need on turn six. Okay, interesting. Because it goes down. When in deck, it's 54.53. When drawn, 53.94. When played, 52.7. Which is not what you see want to see as a trend on a six drop. Right. I mean, the margin, like, I, I guess that's a, the issue with leaders. You have to have priority. Yeah. And I wonder if, like, you can kind of chalk it up at, like, skill issue for some of these things where people are just playing it thinking, oh, I take their card, I win, It'll but not catch up. really knowing how it works, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it could also be those Red Hulk fake outs, like that position in particular. Yes. Like, how many times has the opponent shown a huge Red Hulk? You play around the big Red Hulk drop and they drop a split of other power. Like, yep. that's just one of the amazing things about Red Hulk. And so, that specific interaction means that Leader might not be doing what you need him to. That's fair. So, we'll see if Leader uh, actually starts to be doing what you need him to be doing uh, with that little bit of a power buff. And then, last, we have Baron Mordo. Ah, uh, another card <laughs> that's like up there with captain america of like yeah. when are you changing this right going it was from so um the honor view of your opponent draws a card set its cost to six to now the more convoluted one that i've seen a lot of people were confused by which is yes. honor view the top card of your opponent's deck costs six until turn six now teddy the way this works it's very simple imagine oh, you ice man the top right. card of their deck yep but instead of increasing it just by one you're setting it to six gotcha once turn six rolls around however it will go right back to its original cost so it's a temporary thing right so the way i've been explaining this to like people like on stream and stuff like that has been on one hand hitting cards like i I guess ant-man um jeff uh maybe some location disruption like uh scarlet witch or like just early cost tempo plays that you want to be able to get down earlier than later, especially in the likes of like decks that want to have big finishers at the top end of five and six, this can be impactful. And the other way this can be impactful is like, let's say you and I are playing Teddy. You don't have a three cost turn three is about to roll around bear more to hit a playable card that could have been played, but now you just skip turn three. Right. Yeah. Like imagine can be good. Imagine it within those, like, the rock context, right? You made your opponent draw a rock, and then that rock transforms into one of their real cards on right. turn six, which still sounds pretty good to me if I'm getting him down early because you're just breaking up those combos potentially. But um, here's where he's not good. Yeah. Let's say, and we'll keep the three-cost theme, let's say he hits either Cerebro, Patriot, Silver Surfer anything like that those are cards where if i'm the opponent and i'm the one playing those decks i'm like cool i will just play these on turn six when they're back as i originally planned (laughs) exactly (laughs) so there are it it doesn't really feel like a card that's going to be sometimes good in that in like you're like it's sometimes just kind of mid or whatever it's very much of like did i really disrupt their tempo really horribly this game or did I just do nothing to them this game? It, that's kind of how it's feeling. And then, of course, if it right. hits a six drop, it hits a six drop. Yeah. There's enough. Like, you you have a lot of picks of cards that can do stuff like this. You have him. You have Iceman. You have Black Widow. And then you have the Dark Hawk package with the rocks. I wonder if, like, does the combination of all of those become oppressive enough to just like win you some games? Or if you're picking and choosing, I don't know. I feel like if it's just in a vacuum and I like have a, an open two cost spot, I almost always pick another two cost. And then if I have to, like if I've decided that I really want something to disrupt my opponent's combos, I still think that I go to like black widow. Yeah. 
or Iceman instead of Baron Moore, like cheaper or a little bit mid game, a little punchier. So you want to know something that's really funny? What's funny? You hit death and you just made their death cheaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one case. Uh, so uh, would she discount that? from the six or would she get permanently set to six? I think it says set its cost to six. That's interesting. I don't know. If she gets discounted, that's that's awful. That's also, so what's, bad. do we know the interaction with wave yet? Like if I. So I, I think I haven't tried it yet, but I'm pretty sure that if I wave, it does go down to four. It goes to four, yeah, because yeah, she's kind of set to always apply after other stuff. Yeah, and I think yeah. Sarah could also reduce things. Maybe that's more of a toss up because Wave is a is a oh, set, not a reduce. But yep. like Sarah might do something as well. I don't know to make him five. Yeah, but you're playing Sarah on five. That's super French. Ninety super, super percent French. of the time, anyway. Wave so is like, a little bit more matter. interesting, right. but exactly. yeah. So yeah, I, I just I don't know. We'll see. It, my my one concern is like. He had a sort of home in Ronin, and I guess he can uh-huh. still be in that deck, but he's nowhere near as good in Ronin as like a turn six type of thing to like help fill their hand with like Max was already better, so Right. So like I'm that's what I'm saying. Like it was already really fringe for him to be in Ronin decks. Yeah. This just kind of nukes him away from Ronin, in my opinion. And now he's just like generic disruptive tool, but my worry is like as you alluded to, there are just better disruptive tools, it seems. Right. He's the also he's, he's the a series tooth. He's three the card. Best so at like what he does. Does that make you want to throw up that this is a series three card? I mean, there's plenty of real bad series three cards, but yeah, it's wild that you're gonna crack this open in a cache when you're trying to get other good things. Yeah. It should be S two for sure. I just I don't Series drop to S two second dinner please all right well let's get to the good stuff so yep uh what do you want to start with grandmaster or sentry let's do sentry because he's we already kind of called out grandmaster and werewolf as some favorites of ours okay so sentry now set back to where he started the four eight creating a negative eight this means that now he has you get this incredible argument of is he better now because he dodges shang or is he worse because he is weaker? Now, obviously, he's still in a better spot than when he released because we have Annihilus. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I think that combo, when you get the pieces to align, is still enough of a power spike to be winning games. So that junk deck is still really strong, really good. And now it just means that when you tempo out Sentry, if the opponent's got the Shang, because now that Leech is now pushed back, Shang is going to come up in playability, I think. Um, you're going to see more Shangs. Being able to dodge the Shang can actually be quite nice. I did have someone try to shang my uh, sentry today. So, muscle memory, man. Muscle rim memory dies hard. I will say, this is the most overrated change in the entire OTA that I have seen the most chatter about of being really? a huge nerf. It's Ooh. not a nerf in the slightest. It. No, I will say that it is a slight nerf. I'll say, in the, I'll take the in the slightest. It I, is in the I slightest. Will... It is a nerf. I will say it's a lateral move. It is a lateral, it is a straight lateral. dead okay. center, zero percent change in either direction. I won't go as far as it is it's very buff, close to me. Um, but I will say the fact that Shang doesn't hit it does matter. And the it reason does. for me, and the reason for me that this is a lateral move and doesn't seem as a nerf to me is because a the Shang thing bounces it out, and b I'm seeing a lot of people be like, "Well, four power is a lot of power to lose," but let's put it in context. Right. Teddy, if, if if I were to tell you that they're gonna nerf Infinite by four uh-huh. power on the next OTA, yep. that's a lot, right? I mean from yeah, twenty to sixteen he's, based he's on how still Infinite happens is as a to card. be the tied for the biggest card in the game. Sure, but he's no longer the biggest, he's just tied. And now yeah. a, a Red Hulk that just does what he does. Red Hulk will pass him can, for sure. Can yeah. surpass him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could say the same thing about things like Giganto, right? Oh, yeah. Or Magneto. I mean, you're going to six cards. costs, let alone four costs. Like, for four costs, you got to be like, what if a Tuma lost four power, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> those, <laughs> those are all huge. The yeah. reason those are all huge is because they are cards that are designed to be played just as a raw stat power idea, for the most part, in a lane. Yep. And that's all they, that's all they uh, contribute to, is a single right. lane. Sentry is not... It's not correct to look at Sentry and say... You're losing four power. 
you're actually just losing two power in two lanes, which is far less impactful than four power in a single lane. On top of which, comparing it to a Nihilus and actually using context of where he's being played, you're going from a 26 power swing with these two cards to a 22 power swing. Yeah. That is, and that is across up to three lanes. It's at the very least up to in, in two lanes. So in that, with that in mind, that makes it to me really low impact and still going to be without a doubt the best package in Marvel Snap. That does not change to me. That is still going to be the constant. You don't think that maybe that, Hawk is like right there now? Mm, no, I think this is just better because okay. Hawk has an order of events you really need in like short. So does Annihilus in a way because you really want Annihilus. You want to finish on Annihilus same thing what you want yeah, to finish with Annihilus Hawk, and typically. Sentry conflict with each other, but Hood fits in anywhere. Right. Um, and even turn six, you can hold on. And like if you have a late Hood as a top deck, yeah, sometimes you just go just put throw Annihilus and if yeah. it goes over, it goes over. Um, I just, and on top of that, how often do you see today the package of Korg, Rockside, uh, and Darkhawk just thrown into any other nine cards? Yeah, like the good cards Hawk deck is definitely not around that much. I think it could be, but... Could. Most of the utility heavy decks go with like Sarah right now of like getting right. discounts. Or with this, with the sentry yeah. thing. Um and I mean, and again, not getting hit by Shang Chi anymore is is I think a very, very good change for that. Um, it is, it's also true to call out that like um the Dark Hawk package, if you extend it to four cards, includes Black Widow, which is much weaker for that package than White Widow does for the junk mm -hmm. deck. Right. The, the package, including White Widow, is like really strong and dynamic. So they have that new tool that also is making them like stay energized with these other modern decks. Yeah, I agree. And it's just, it's just a package that is very good. It's not going to change in that sense. And I do think they're probably going to have to take a look at Annihilus next. Because yeah, honestly, like two points off a of Nihilus in the next OTA could be something you see. And I think the deck then probably much more arguable if not the best package, but still playable. Yep. Um, still, you know, if they if they make a Nihilus of 5-4, that's still a 9-20 across uh, three lanes, which is like not as insane as some other, uh, other uh, three-card combos, but like, or two-card combos actually, so... Yeah, that's the um, two-card combo. You're taking away one spot from your opponents, which is kind of like really hard to math out. What's the value of taking yeah. away that board space as well? But of course, your opponent can block it in some situations, so you have that inconsistency. There's like a lot of dynamic factors in how competitive the package is, and I think it's still okay. There's a formula we could absolutely create to determine yeah. like how, how valuable a board space slot is. Like, What is the average power output in Marvel Snap? And then treat a board space as the average power um and if you okay but then that, don't you have to you'd have to like scale it by the number of the, times you fill a location to four instead of three right right you'd also have to scale it based on like you have to do like uh like uh also like divided by the uh the, the turn it is as well to oh, yeah. try to get a percent like a percentile of like the scale from value to turn value as well Someone who's a mathematician, please make this this uh, this uh, this. Uh, yep, and form. Then we'll steal it. <laughs> we will. We'll credit you though. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that that's. Uh, I I just think Sentry is still really good in context. Yes. Um, if no, this was old Sentry without an iOS, I'd be like, yeah, he's dead. Right. But like, that was the reason they made this change in the first place because we had Viper <laughs> and like yeah. Carnage and cost. stuff like that. Yeah. 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 So because Viper was hitting a little different too. Right um so it's just it's it's a good it's fine it's it's not not that big of a deal people need to calm down grandmaster werewolf baby now you got to remember old werewolf was a 3-3 but you also got to remember old werewolf was actually by the end of the game if you played him on tempo like a 3-16 <laughs> so making him a 3-14 is pretty dang good now starting at the 3-1 stat line man 
it's going to be super interesting to see what evolves here because I know tons of people are going to be trying the wolf decks. Bounce has kind of fallen out of favor. We already called out Loki as being solid. I think Junk and Dark Hawk are going to be able to make good use of them because they're so loaded up with on reveals. And yep. now the new White Widow is going to be super good with Werewolf, both against Werewolf and with Werewolf. Ooh, ooh, delicious. Yeah, and now I we play... got Beast. Beast got back to oh, the yeah. cheaper version. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like I'm taking a trip down memory lane of like how many cards are different, but then some of them have actually been reverted to like even better states. So like, wow, a lot of stuff to ponder. Yeah, today I played a, um, it was a junk list with an Ilus and Sentry in the hood. But it was also running Thor, Jane Foster, Beta Ray Bill, and Werewolf. Hit um, monkey? No hit monkey. Okay. On no monkey drop, just werewolf. Yep. Just top okay. out on okay. um top out of five. Uh that was the most expensive thing. They had like White Widow in there as well. Um, yeah, and yeah. some other like Shadow King, uh Shang Chi. So like some other on reveals to like just keep you good tempo. Uh, Shadow was... King is a brain breaker with werewolf and those cards, man. I hats off to you for trying that. Oh, it's so much fun. I love it. You can it. hit so many of your own cards. Sure. But you can also uh, see the opponent's werewolf and you're like, hmm, dream dimension. I'm yep. going to bet they're going to play a single card this turn and then snipe their werewolf from like eight to one again. <laughs> That's and then they what I really love about werewolf is the guessing games and the anticipation of like, because you get some information on where he can go and places mm-hmm. he's limited to, but then they can always throw the bluff of like filling and not moving him at all. Uh, kind of like the vision tricks but because werewolf is often a little bit higher power he's more vulnerable to any kind of control than vision was and ah, peak snap when you get the call right yeah anything that's going to introduce a uh, more skill ceiling uh, or skill expression in the game werewolf is that and werewolf 100%. is 100% is grandmaster that i think grandmaster is kind of that too closer uh but not quite there because i think now you can do just br- brain dead, just curve out stuff with Grandmaster. Yeah, I was going to say, like, this is a big, largely in favor of just a tempo Grandmaster double up on Scorpion, double up on Iceman kind of yep. shenanigans. Well, I mean, just I- I'm excited Nico. to try. I- I've been playing him in the in the junk list. I played him that today with, yeah, when yeah. I was with the, the Jane Foster and stuff like that. You get some opportunities where, like, late you can, you know, do hammer and uh, yeah. Grandmaster the hammer. Uh, but really just turn one hood, get another right. demon is fantastic on tempo. Or even like turn four, hit it onto a Thor, like a right. mid-game piece. Yeah. Especially if like Jane Foster in hand, so you know you're going to get Oh, yeah, hammers. yeah, double hammer. Um, doing this on Korg for Darkhawk, I'm interested in trying. Like just turn right, one Korg, turn two a you're... Grandmaster, or turn five with uh, Rock Slide. Yeah, you're introducing the... Um the rock so early that makes them more impactful white widow white widow is disgusting if she's spitting over more kisses yeah so the the simple idea of like you no longer just take this huge like loss of tempo in order to gain an extra like ability um now even at just a two two is enough to be like yeah this is this is playable on two and white widow is a two two like just do it again yeah this this in my mind makes this far more impactful than thing uh, people are like le- like looking at um i for the longest time when i was like just let's try him at 2-1 like right because th- this is a card where i was like i get it i understand like they, they say that we were a bit too conservative and i was like but i understand why you were because on paper this is a incredibly powerful effect it's to very trigger and on reveal and like now there's really not much of a downside at all anymore to him um so that's why i was thinking two one is what they would try and then if he was still performing bad they go to two two but i, I i'm interested to see how he does go straight to two two i wouldn't be Me shocked too. if they have to go back to a two one i really wouldn't yeah now there's some pretty insane stuff you can do also holding him to go double shang Double right. Valkyrie, even with magic, Shadow the two, King. Two, that way, you help yourself Shadow with the, the werewolf. Yep. Oh, ooh, yep. hitting a werewolf and a monkey in the same turn. Could you imagine? Okay, so we do. We'll call out the werewolf interaction in a sec, but I will call out on Grandmaster that this breaks up the Renslayer decks that were using him. I don't think that's a big deal 
but it is some of the places he'd had a home because he was getting yeah. this discount to be a one cost. But I think this is still just better all around. Yeah, but now, I found with him Werewolf, to be pretty cuttable in those decks, though. The on reveals are nested. So say you have Werewolf in the right lane, and then you have your Iceman in the left, and you have mm. play Grandmaster on the left. Iceman will then go to the middle, activate his on reveal. I be- my understanding is Werewolf will go mid, and then Werewolf will go left to Grandmaster. Yes, I believe so, because Grandmaster's ability does not finish until Iceman's ability finishes. Or no. Or no, actually, you go, no, you go to Grandmaster Werewolf, first and then Werewolf, go to... Hang on, hang on. Does Werewolf only go to Grandmaster because the other card is not played? It is yes, just Yes, it says reactivated? after you play a card, move there to gain plus two power. Uh, okay, so... So it's only going to go to so Grandmaster. It'll only go to Grandmaster. Okay. I think Grandmaster is still a great tool for those decks. It's just it's not a multiplicative um, effect. Right. It's still just the simple idea of like hitting a very impactful one drop. Yes, um, or two. A couple times today, had the double Nico, like Nico double herself. Yeah. Grandmaster, immediately a 1-8. Yeah. Like tempo that's cool. baby, tempo baby. Yeah, we, we, we love it. We love it. We're thriving. It's a good OTA. I will say overall, it's a very good OTA. Um, it's just, it's weird because like, I'm trying to think of like, does it really shake up the meta a whole lot? You're reintroducing Werewolf by Night into the format. Oh, it, it definitely does. The, that the Werewolf alone, edition and the Leech shift is going to, I think, shake things up. I was looking at everything else, and I'm like, I feel like the Century Annihilus deck maybe takes a dip in play because players yep. love taking their power. Cool toys and be like, you're bad now, even though they're not. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I just like, I love the OTA. Just looking at it, I, I don't know how much the Cap America buff is going to push ongoing. Or if it's just going to kind of like with the combination of Luke Cage and Spectrum taking hits as well, will that balance it out like they're intending? Um, I, I think, yeah, that deck will be very similar. I'm not too worried about that deck spiking. Um, but yeah, I definitely like the werewolf adding into the meta. The leech just opening up some of the play patterns that had been available before and not so oppressive on just like leech blink tricks. And then, yeah, like the the sentry is going to change the dunk junk decks play, whether or not it hurts it too much or not. We don't think it'll hurt it too much, but we'll see. And I mean, the leech change that's like the huge like seismic shift, right? Is because things yeah. were going ongoing. People were not running Shang anymore because you couldn't your um, control cards would never survive until the end of the match. So I think that's going to change things a bunch. You know what didn't change much, though? What didn't change at all, Brad? Namora. Uh, yeah. Namora did not make a huge splash. Uh, however, partially, I think, due to Leech's presence. Right. Um, I will say, though, the most successful deck that I played did run Goblins. Um, Ravona Goblins was the best one I played. Uh, just doing Fun. like Ravona, send some goblins over Wong into Namora into Odin yeah. was yeah that very, was me it was the good. Wong Odin right White Tiger very, yeah that that too it's very good like I mean it, like when it works um, I did try a Thor Beta Ray Bill thing of like if you don't draw Jane she's now like just alt- alternative to Jane in the sense that like True. you don't draw your hammers but you get like pseudo hammer buff of each like of those cards five. are yeah basically buffed like a hammer. Yeah, it was okay. It was perfectly okay. I just, you know, it it didn't really, like some games I would have Jane and I would try to go like, you know, uh, Jane, um, Hammer, Hammer, Namora, like all in one lane and then just have uh, the other two, Thor and Bait in the other two lanes. And like, it basically be like 19 and 22 was what that would result in. And it just wasn't quite enough to beat yeah. a lot of other decks. Yeah. So I think you Jeez. really need to be doing the Wong Odin thing. 
Right. But then at the point where you're doing Wong Odin, you have all these other unreveal cards that you can lean into instead. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. I mean, if you're going to play greedy like that, it that could be Black Panther Zola as well. And I don't see this as like that much different or more consistent than those other decks. In fact, it might be less consistent because it's contingent on getting these early plays in position on other lanes prior to going straight Wong, Namora, Odin, because then you're, the end of your game is locked up. Like your last four turns are locked up. By turn three, your board is like, you have to understand exactly how your board is going to look. So, yeah. And then like there's Jeff at like Nocturne in there. That I think everyone's kind of settled on as being like the best thing as well because they're movable. Move them can... around dynamic it, it does create an interesting like there are some games that i lost simply because i was like too committed to doing the namora a second time with like things like odin where oh, yeah if i had jeff and namora in like lanes on their own what i should have done in a lot of instances is like abandon one of those lanes and like move one of them you know to stack like with the namora um yep. and then like opt to play something else besides uh odin like a white tiger right she could double yeah, tiger just somewhere use that wong but in a different way correct so yeah it's it's a i, I think there's still something there it's just unfortunately no more maybe look she's an easy skip i still think she's pretty good she can be very powerful when she goes off but for the most part there's really not a whole lot of play with like what you can do with her i still think goblins in conjunction with wong stuff is the best thing because you can take away power from your opponent's side of the board without ruining your own game plan. Like it just, that, that by far worked the when, best for me. And Renslayer feeds the whole package. Ironheart, um, yep. Goblins, and White Tiger. Yeah, and you can yeah. Ironheart hit the cards that are by themselves. And then, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, that's fun. And it's, it's, it's cool. It's just, uh, if you're not really into the Wong stuff, uh, like the Wong right. reveals, it's not going to be a deck that you're going to be super like thrilled to go pick up for a spot like cash no. and stuff. Yeah, so it's disappointing. I was incredibly hyped for this card, and it's just falling a little bit out of reach of what the meta decks do. Maybe there's something that they can do to her in the future that will tune her to be more that like high risk but super powerful single card in a lane. But one thing I, I wanted to try, I haven't tried it yet, because I know it's so convoluted. But yeah. I was thinking of trying like uh zero with like your other one drops like titania martyr uh ebony maw like those oh, okay turn two you go zero plus one of those in the lanes by themselves like that's like you're trying to go for yep um yep. turn three you play kyera and then turn four you go wong uh, the mora uh, oh, and then Auden. Uh, Odin. yeah like ebony maw might just be a good card to run in this deck in general, right? Right. You have so many ways to buff him with either Namora buffing him or a White Tiger still landing there or an Ironheart still getting there. And then the 1-7 stat line is beefy boy. So it could be something there. And I was like, it, the, the one seemed to fit nicely. You, you have a nice three drop that works with it with the Kyra, um, and you protect yeah. it. The other alternative idea is just very simply Wasp uh, Yellow Jacket. That way, like oh, yeah. you can, they you get can, there. You can just go like turn four Wong. You do nothing until turn four. Just play the Wong. Five, you go your Wasp Yellow Jacket Namora, <laughs> and then Odin. I'm here now. Uh, or in some cases, you could just wait until turn six and just not Odin them. Um, but like Odin gives gives you another twenty power, so <laughs> you probably want to do that. Interesting. Yeah, is there something that you could do on the Wong? Lane on five, if you were going to delay for a Nomura plus the one drops. Well, this would be the, uh, the zeros, the, the yellow jacket and wasp. Uh, I wish, I wish Captain Marvel was still a three. Cause then you could go like Wong forge into Captain Marvel on five so that she's like mm -hmm. big enough to shift and really mean something. And then the freebies and Nomura. Nah, we'll see. We'll see. Like the Captain Marvel is one of the more interesting things is like if I mega buff this card, that could be really annoying for my opponent. Well, that's but... why I want to try the Martyr too because I'm like if you mega buff Martyr, it's like she'll just she just won't move to lose you a lane more often than not. 
Um, cause you should be, I don't know. I feel like that's actually filling. pretty high risk to put a lot of eggs in the martyr basket when then she'll double up on your best lane, you know? True. Like I like the captain Marvel much better than martyr. I don't know. That's my take though. Yeah. Because you're, you're playing with a very thin board. I feel you're like right. martyr is best when you're filling locations and this deck is rarely if ever filling locations. Yeah, you're really only filling the long lane. Yeah. And what you're doing. Uh, but hey, if you win the long lane, doesn't matter. Right. Then you're then you're doing pretty well. Also, the deck gets hurt a lot by locations that spawn tokens or yep. white widows or leech, of course. Uh, so just like all There's around a lot going against her. so much disrupts it that it's a it's a problem. Magneto, uh, Brad's favorite card in the whole game. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's still fun. But I, I would... hurts the most is knowing Magneto was right. <laughs> yep. Let's nerf him. Let's nerf him next. No, never. Make never, him a 6-6. Six, six. As we look forward, though, Sasquatch seems to be positioned much better. I was initially hesitant as we were evaluating cards this season to put a lot of value on Sasquatch because that was at a time when Mobius was absolutely everywhere. Now... It's shifted. Leech was everywhere, and Mobius is not seen as much. It could now it could shift back always, um, but Sasquatch discounting himself per each card you played on the previous turn, and then the six ten stat line seems really fun to be able to play around with, especially with a werewolf bounce Grandmaster package like within my reach. Yeah, and again, like if you just simply go turn five Mysterio Hit Monkey, then you can play both Sasquatch and Mockingbird. On turn six. Yes, because she's a two and he's a two. Uh, no, she'd be a three and he'd be a two. She's a five. Yeah. You have three Mysterio clones. Oh, she counts all of them. That's right. Because the yeah, other yeah. ones aren't revealed yet. Yep, that's so right. Two, two, and then you still have two more cost left over. Um, yeah. I think that, like, goodbye, Cull in these um, bounce decks, like Sasquatch is just going to be better. I agree. No, I agree. Now, do you, like, what do we think? I know this is real off meta, but the scar stuff. You have another 10 cost, potentially cheap. You've got call. You've lost Sentry at this point, but. Well, so let's think about it. So let's say the biggest you can go is, uh, so you can go like, Psylocke on like you go one drop Psylocke and then you can play Cole yep. on three, right? Yes. Um that makes him uh or that makes Scar how much? Uh, just four right there? Yeah, he goes minus two, so so then on on four, if you just play like two cards, or I guess even just no, just one card on four, just one card right. on four, which could be Scar in that sense. Um, you, so you can go, yeah, one drop, Psylocke, Scar, Sasquatch costs five there. Um, so you can just play them on five. And then you have 10, 11, and 10 uh, through those few turns. Um, right. Man, I don't know. That could if be you okay. Can... You're spreading a lot of uh, enough power, but like, I don't know. You, you probably want to yeah. stack those in some way, but then there's Shang-Chi. So. Yeah, I think that the trick is getting them out as early as possible. Like you kind of want Sasquatch coming in in pretty cheap on five like you want something set up super early and still get sasquatch cheap on five and as much as you pass as possible could roll over into a she hulk plus um scar final turn if you can get but the combination of she hulk and scars costs to be six or i mean obviously less is better but that could be super fun if you play, I mean, if you play Mysterio on two, then you could play Sasquatch on three. Mysterio on two, Sasquatch three, and then if you played a one drop, you could go Cull on four, full pass, and then hello. Okay. Yeah, maybe your maybe your one drop is uh, Sunspot. Yeah, or Nebula, or yeah, oh, something, something that yeah, grows sunspot, passively. Sunspot. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Okay. Okay. And then you go Mysterio we... on two, Sasquatch on three, whatever on four. You could even go Moon Girl on four. I was just going to say, the old deck, 
would be super greedy with a moon girl and then it's the double she hulk drop but here and then titanium you can just kind of play it's like it's like a grab bag like which version did you get did you get two she hulks okay i'm doing a pass on five or do you get did two, I get mocking two birds? scars okay then can i get them down to two cost in time did i play or maybe i play one early uh, for four and my next one is two plus something else or did i get two sasquatches and then i'm card vomit on five to go double sas or double quatch on uh, six. Yeah. I'm getting excited just explaining it. I don't know if it's that good, though. <laughs> Probably not, but it'll win games. I'm I'm here for this. Maybe Moon Girl is the play now, and you just find it. It sounds just, very you just interesting. Play, so it's, it's Sunspot, Titanium, Martyr, your three drops, or your one drop, yes. sorry. Yes. Um, maybe you could do one maybe more. Maybe Titanium. But... If you're playing her on the last turn, you usually can just just do make just do Ant Man, bro. If we're, especially if we're doing Mysterio, right? That's fair. Yeah, let's do all four. Why okay. not? Okay, those four. Mysterio is your two drop. Uh, any other two drops we want? Um, interesting. I mean, you just kind of flesh out the deck here with um versatile cards. You could go Jeff. You could go location manipulation. Um. Okay, so let's yeah. let's focus on the core. Then we'll revisit the twos. Then so we have those five. Uh, three, we have. You could go that, magic. Is this eh. is this a deck you want to go magic? I don't no? think we want. I think we want to pace it out so that turn six is our big, big moves. Do you play any three cost then? I mean, maybe Mobius again, could, just to disrupt them. Yeah, you could play Mobius. You could play, yeah, just some kind of disruption. We're probably going with like a um, White Widow on the two cost side. Sure. On the three cost side, I don't know how much really yeah, fuels this game plan unless you really feel like you need. Um, I mean, you could also go like <sighs> Dazzler and then She Devil, but I don't know if that's where we want to go with this. Maybe. Uh, then you do Moon Girl, yeah. um, doing She Hulk. Uh, Squatch, uh, Scar. Cole Obsidian Scar. Do we run? No, yeah, no call. No, maybe not. We don't. You'll get. You'll get any reduction on Cole. I think you might want Mockingbird yeah. though. Yes, I think we play Mockingbird, especially because we have the Moon Girl trickery mm -hmm. and the Mysterio, of course. Downside um, is Mockingbird doesn't get anything for Scar. No, she's too small, unfortunately. You could run something that's going to buff one of these cards. Like you could do could Mockingbird do or Gladiator with what? Could just not run Scar. That feels, that you might it up be, as a Scar deck. You I know, think but that, that they, might be the greediest aspect of the deck so far really? now I'm thinking about it. No, I think it's okay. I feel like She-Hulk and Mockingbird are already pretty consistent. And then you have the I mean, one, yeah, the, one the Mockingbird. The Mockingbird might be better than Scar. It's true. It's true. It's true. I think it's absolutely better than Scar. I don't think it's on a mm, might. So much to test. Okay. I think that Scar is worth testing, but maybe it does end up on Mockingbird being a little bit better with the moon girl. But then you probably want Quinjet. Le we're greedy. We're going to lean into it. Mm -hmm. Do we run a discard card like Blade or like Colleen Wing to cultivate what the moon girl will do for us? Hmm. I have always kind of liked this idea in a Moon Girl deck because often my problem is I'm like, oh, but then I don't duplicate the card that I want. But if I have the Colleen Wing or the Blade, then I really could. But it could also just suck if... If they're just stuck in your hand. <laughs> if they're stuck in the hand and I don't have Moon Girl and then I'm like, or I don't want to discard four, this thing, but I want something to do. And you draw a blade and it's... Like... Yeah, I mean, you can always play it at the end of the game instead, I guess. But yeah... <laughs> I'd That's rather just, just have weird. like more cheap stuff to be able to like just get stuff out of your hand naturally okay. as opposed to like try to cultivate the hand with too many big things. But then board space like goes down. I don't know. Hulkbuster. You're, you're we, just, run, you're... we run Hulkbuster oh, okay, to buff sure. the gladiator and discount the scar. I'm back on scar. Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Sure, you can do that. That's 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 a thing you can do. 
uh, why why not just do Forge into Gladiator then? You could also do Forge into <laughs> Gladiator, but then my deck is looking like it's pretty bulky. But that could be fun too. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It could be. <laughs> Brad's like, I don't know either. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> I, I'm just not a Scar believer. Yeah. I haven't been. Okay, since but the main released. thing, you're, you're going to play Sasquatch inbounds, right? This is right. Yeah, obvious that's, for that's us. That's the main idea. Um, it's just a question on if this discount is like so valuable that I, off a of Moon Girl, if you have two of them in hand and then you play enough cards to get them down to three or two, like that's a good final turn. It's because you have that flexibility of splitting your power levels. You know, if you can play two of these guys, yes, that's infinite. But split between the lanes is way better for you right. than locked up in one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun to play. I like him a lot. It's also crazy. This is the last card already for the month. We're already at the end of May. Where did the time go, mate? I mean, I, we've I had a full know. season. We got the full complement. And, dude, we're looking ahead to so many cool cards. And then we're going to get our patch with the new data mine. So even Oof. farther into the future, man, Oof. Snap World is a good one. This month is How insane. Have, have insane. we had any any word from our, our brothers and sisters over in EU? Are leagues good? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, they're still, I like, haven't heard they're anything. They're still paid to win. Like, I, I haven't know. heard anything about leagues, and that was like their big thing. Are they yeah. coming to us this next season, or are they going to give it, like, a, put it back in the oven? I'm like, hoping they put it back this was in the just oven. Like, uh, this is like my gluten free brownies that are half crust and half mush in the middle. Like, okay, leagues go back. Yeah, I, I would imagine they kind of revisit it and try. How? To... Okay. We're going to, obviously, leagues are better if they're just not pay to win. How can can we find a way that we would like leagues, but mm-hmm. still have a way for Second Dinner to monetize them? Is there a way that we would be happy with monetization on leagues? Right now, if you guys haven't heard, you have an ability to pay gold to put a blocker on you losing points in your league if oh. any from any lost matches, yeah. and you can pay gold to be able to get um it's like a doubling of how many cubes you you gain just make it so that it costs gold to enter the league in the first place and make the rewards better to where you can grind leagues and actually come out plusing gold like ah, other so card games like a, do like a buy-in yeah they have an entry it's kind of it would be kind of like conquest right yeah. Except where you, you have a limited of... currency on entering the league but it's a monthly Right. Thing that you're but it's there. a currency you can buy. Yes. Like Magic Arena does this. You can enter their, what are we just called? So, They're called leagues as well, but it's like, it's right. like a best of like, so there's, um, you have like tiers of like, if you win one game, you get like this many gems. But the, the currency in Arena is called gems. Same thing yeah. as gold in this game. Yeah, you yeah, pay yeah. real money. It's a premium currency, them. premium currency. Yeah. Um, and you want to aim to win seven games as the, is the top. Out of those seven wins you can get, you are allowed to have two losses. Once yes. you get your um, your second loss, you're out. Right. So you got to go seven and one. So yeah, yeah. if you max out, though, there are grinders on Arena that, and like same thing with like Magic Online, you they can grind and get back the currency and just infinitely do it over and over again. Whereas, like, right. you know, you can't do that right now. I, the first step that I would like to see is have a limited number of these, um, these like point blockers and point doublers purchasable per league. Like you can only buy two. Um, cause I, I actually like the idea that there's more to winning the league than just your win rate in games that like you have this extra level of strategy of when am I going to apply the point blocker and when am I going to apply the point doubler mm-hmm. i don't know i like that that meta gaming thing that makes it more different than just ladder to me because if i'm grinding ladder like my rank shows how good i am now i need my my league to show how good i am so how good am what makes it different from my ladder rank to winning my league and it is kind of these bonuses and whatnot and so sure. if they make a free-to-play way to get them and then a cap on how many can be used per season i think that's the first step for me yeah, so they have free to play challenges to get them, and like yeah. the cap is the same whether you buy them or earn them for free. It's just like if you right. want a shortcut and not do these free to play challenges to earn these, 
you get two per season or two per yep. like league season, um, yep. which are leagues shorter than a regular I think season. League is a, I think the league runs the full season. Okay. That's my understanding. Yeah. Currently. So like, oh, I would also just reduce the league thing then. I would just not, run it for two weeks out of the whole season. I would do and then have week. an off league, have an, have an off week. I would do, I would do one a week. Oh, one league a week. Yep. Okay. I would do a week. I think a week I mean, is snaps. way long enough to uh, to do it. Interesting. There are some weeks that I don't want to play snap that much. Then you're not in the league that week, buddy. I guess not. There I want to go. play capes. I got a new game I'm on. Right? Well, I'll put it. I'll, let me put it this way. Um, so I play a lot of NHL with friends. Yeah. Uh, I've played yeah, yeah. Uh, the NHL games for about um a decade now. We've we've been playing together as like as our club since 14, and I've been playing the franchise in general since nhl like 10 nice. um so we play a lot we play every year we get them every year and they have yep. eashl which is just ea sports hockey league it's like you yeah, yeah. all play as our own individual player we have our club and there's playoffs what they right. had for a while was the playoffs would be you would have like 30 days of like a season um actually no i'm sorry it used to be every other every uh every other month so it was um or every two months, sorry. So it was 60 days of a regular season, and then you had a month of playoffs. And then, okay. uh, so you had like limited playoff runs in the entire year. And like, yeah. it does two things. It makes the playoffs seem to matter a bit more. Right. But it also feels way worse when it's like, you didn't have the chance to play the playoffs for that weekend or that week that they were going on for. Fair. Um, when and then you just missed out on the playoffs of like your five opportunities for the playoffs so now they do it where it's uh i think about it's four weeks of regular season and then i think a week of uh week of playoffs and then they just keep doing that interesting Um, now leagues leagues are based on just like cube gain and loss so that means it could kind of also i wonder if they have a way that it accommodates conquest matches i kind of like the idea of like one a week and then it shuffles around like what league you are in, and so then that like you know by the final week of the season, like you're in the big boys league. Yeah, uh, just have it start are. on on Tuesdays on the reset. That's when the league yeah. starts. And then yeah, exactly. every, fresh every league, Tuesday, fresh it's, it's a new uh, new league. Little shot in the arm of currency, which and that's the aspect I like. Like pretty much everybody's going to be getting a little bit more currency with leagues than without because they're adding this into the game. So personally. I would rather see more than a, a timed league. I'd rather see something similar to what arena has and like where, or like what, what online has and stuff where it's just like, Hey, you can enter this whenever you want. It's not against other people. Technically it's just, you bet this much like to enter like this, this much gold and you have a chance to get that gold back and more, but you have to win a significant yeah, amount of games. Like, like, yeah, you have to do like kind of like conquest, but still best of one. Yeah, yeah. And you get right. a, lo- You're a loss different pool. people very quickly. But then, honestly, I want that to be draft. Yeah, I want that space to be open. That's what for a Arena draft does mode. that for draft too. Like that's you can yeah. do that there. They have constructed leagues and they have draft leagues. So okay, yeah. So I want I want that format on my draft league, and then maybe second dinner, put what you have right now back in the oven. Just make gold matter again for the average person. Like let us like use them to like grind with. Like, what do you mean? Truly. It lets you. It lets you buy your Jessica Jones. Uh, variant that we just got so lovely then let me get more of it baby all right isn't that, isn't that a really bad bundle it's like it's just three thousand tokens right for 35 nah, it's gold. A, so i mean it's like a, pretty much like your um token tuesdays but then like a mega token tuesday with a free variant i don't really like the variant that much no but i still oh, bought it the, I can't uh, at least it's not my gold at least it's not as bad as the uh, miss marvel bundle yeah there, there, there are worse ones, but but the reason that one's worse, Teddy, is because Miss Marvel is a Series Five, and if you don't have Miss Marvel and you purchase that bundle, you get a new shiny card. That is true. It's a way to actually fast track your progression, whereas the JJ is like you already had JJ. Well, is it really fast tracking if you can still unlock the base card as a card unlock? Can they change that? You, I think they should change that. You get to that. play with it, so yeah, in that yeah, aspect, but like, it is fast tracked. But like, as far as like the long run of like earning your collection. You yeah, still it doesn't actually accelerate that, that at all. Yeah, you're going to yeah. hit that speed bump of getting the base art. This is my take, and this has been my take okay. for a while. Yep, this if is the final you, take of the episode. Yep, Brad's if got you it. Purchase, right. If you purchase a card yep. like the the new Miss Marvel bundle or that uh, the Jet Ski Mobius bundle. Yep, when you're where, like a Series 3 player. Yeah, where you unlock that Series 5 card for the first time via this variant. That is now treated as the card, the base card being unlocked 
And then now that base art either just is immediately in your collection. You just have the card now, or it's a variant you can pull now as opposed yes. to like, yeah, you would get it out of the variant probability, not the unlocking new card probability. Correct. Because then that could potentially exclude you from getting like the um, spotlight variant in the future because you have to pull the base art first. Like, Correct. Yeah. Nah, it seems like a mess. <laughs> I, I would just go with the first made... option of like you purchase it and you get the base card. Like it's like yes. claim like, base card it, it, and then it, it says simplify. Claim it would absolutely simplify everything. And also, I think that system made a little bit more sense when you had this residual chance of pulling it in every cache. But yeah. now, because the acquisition of S4 and S5 is so honed in on the spotlight caches, you should just get the cards. All right. Well, hopefully they do that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to be it for us this week. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, let us know what you guys think of the OTA down below in the comments. If you want to get early access or live access even to episodes, you can join the Patreon at patreon.com slash can't stop snapping. Link in the description. Follow us on Twitter, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we will see you guys next week. Don't stop snapping. Can't Stop Snapping is a podcast hosted and produced by Brad Saffer and Teddy Ninja, originally created by Michael Thurman.